Joining me now on this episode of Locally Source CP is the founder and man of many talents, Mr. Jorge Salgado. Sir, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, of course, man. Always good to talk to you. Oh man, I I I I know we've I've had you on. I think you were one of my first guests with a few other photographers. I, I think it was my first episode I had you on. Uh, it, it was it was pretty crazy. Uh, we we know we talked about the anniversary of the El Paso shooting, but today we're talking about you, man. We're talking about you. Your many your man of many talents. Everyone in El Paso knows your work. I mean, you work with a lot of people, local and also out of town stuff. Uh, I just like I'm just so glad you agreed to be on, man, because you're a man of many talents and very, very talented. Oh man, I I I just go to work is how I describe it. Um, I I don't know if that's me being a little humble, but yeah, I'm pretty pretty grateful with the people I get to work with. I I network pretty well. Hopefully, um, it's working out so far. So I'm I'm happy about all of it. Oh man, it's cool. I I met you when you first started working, and just like. It's just so amazing to see how, like, how much you've grown, how much, like, just the, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying your the quality of your work has ever been bad, but I mean, it's it's just like, it's always been good, but just it's, I mean, it, 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 people just have to go to your website and just see your, the quality of your work, dude. It's like so impressive. I don't, I've never shot as well as you in the many, many years that I've, I've tried to like shoot video wise or uh, photo wise. Yeah, I, I don't I don't believe that, but I mean you'll you'll ask any photographer or videographer and they'll look at their first stuff and they're like, ugh. Like just doing weird stuff, stuff that you were like thought was creative, you know, like the little Sony point and shoots and they do like a little color pop and I was like, Oh my god, this is so cool and then quickly quickly I was like, Oh, I just maybe I should just focus on like getting a good photo and not not uh uh desaturating colors in in a photo. But yeah, man, uh I think this is this is like my 11th year of shooting uh I started with in the last two seasons of the Diablos uh which feels like an eternity ago but blast from the past name drop there man yeah I mean it was those were two internship years that were they were wonderful they introduced me to a lot of good people people I still am good friends with today um but yeah those early days I don't know I don't know if I'd show that work in in the public (laughs) again (laughs) Well, no, man, I, 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 that is so cool how, how, how much that from like, you know, everyone has to start somewhere and, and that's so cool. What, what got, what got you into, what got you into photography originally? Um, I don't know. So like, I, I, I assume I just always had a creative side and so I used to really like to write and that's something I still just keep for myself, but I, I, and I asked for a camera, maybe when I was like a, a freshman in high school, it was just like a little hp point and shoot you know like hp is not like a big maker of cameras these days but i just like to take pictures i just like to document the world around me um yeah and then that that internship came around and i was like wow this is like really cool and so just kept shooting i would go to the utep women's basketball games post photos on instagram you know using like i would get in using my my student id and like little by little i got to know the people at utep and like they're connected to people at the chihuahuas and so it kind of just snowballed and now i like i wake up and i'm like oh it's pretty cool like i just i get to make photos that feels like uh like such a dream job that it it almost doesn't feel real like uh, every time i want to complain i'm just like dude shut up like you get to work (laughs) with a lot of people you get to choose the people you work with so um yeah i don't know 11 years ago it feels like a long time ago but it's been such a such a fun ride Uh, It's so cool, man. Just the way you've expanded yourself, like, you know, doing, you know, being, you know, photographer for hire, doing uh, your gorgeous, gorgeous, like scenic scenic shots of El Paso, what you do there, Um, your gorgeous shots of like graduation photos, dude, that that is so cool. Like, you're so creative and and, and the way you do like the style that yet you shoot in, especially for the graduation photos. It's so cool. I, I mean, I mean, talk a little bit about like your, your, uh, your creativity or, or how you come up with some of the shots and poses. If you, if you don't mind sharing, of course. No, no, I don't mind sharing. Um, you know, some of it's just kind of impulsive. I'm a really impulsive person. Um, at this point I've probably done like a hundred, 120 graduation photos. So some of it is a little rhythmic. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like, you know, I like what I tell the grads is like, yeah, I know how to like make a photo look good, but I think what 
needs to be super emphasized, especially if you're a photographer doing these shoots, is like getting to know who you're like, what you're, sh- or the person that you're shooting yeah. within a few minutes. Because if you can't like, if let's say me and Ray go out and we're, we're doing a photo shoot and we're total strangers and I can't make Ray comfortable in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. I mean, Ray is comfortable. Look at him. <laughs> yeah. Ray's comfortable. But if, if it's someone who's not, if I don't get him like to be comfortable in those first five minutes, it's going to resonate. And so mm-hmm. from there, it just becomes like an uphill battle. So I think, first and most importantly is just like getting to know your grad and and having them be comfortable and they're going to be a little more willing to be like relaxed have them take a deep breath i get anxious i take a deep Mm -hmm. breath with them and so you know as far as the creativity i kind of just have some go-to moves um and just like you kind of get a a feel for people's body language as you're as you're starting to talk to them um yeah finding cool spots going back to those spots like Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's some some spot like if you go to the pick, just knowing like where you can stand them, where you can sit them. Um, doing some research if you go to like Pinterest or or other people's Instagrams. I'm not saying to just like outright steal their shot or their poses or their shots. You should always definitely make them your own. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing to reference other people's work and be like, oh, this could work for this person. Um, you know, just trying to put together different ideas and and cater that to the person you're with as opposed to like well this is like the way i shoot my photos Mm -hmm. i don't i don't ever do that it's always like a little bit of a change um no matter where the setting is no that's cool yeah i i agree i mean it's i i I always thought like uh, you know researching before you go out and then uh uh the the few photo shoots that i've done with 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 people either some graduates and stuff like that i think that is the most important thing is at least try to get to know the person that way like i think them being more comfortable with you like you said is going to resonate in the photo and it's it's going to kind of determine like how it's going to go like if if you're not kind of like a people person or or willing to get to know someone at least that for that little bit they're not going to be comfortable with you and it's going to might they might show out in the photo yeah yeah and likewise too if i don't bring good good energy into the into the shoot like that'll show too Mm -hmm. i mean even if you're a little more introverted people won't wouldn't believe it but i'm pretty introverted and so for me like i call it like being a person a people person when i need to be um and so like i'm lucky if i if i'm only doing a grad shoot that day and i work for an hour a day like i should be able to like turn it on you Mm -hmm. know like someone's choosing you to document this like important moment in their life you should be able to come with good energy and and be talkative and you know find things to talk about asking people you know like what their major is what their plans are what they've thought of el paso if they're not from here um there's a million ways to just like be able to get to know their personality personality a little bit um and yeah that'll like it'll slowly like I guess release the tension. I don't know. I every time I do headshots, it's funny because they're like, <laughs> it, it's like you would think it's the person's worst day of their life, and I'm like, no, man. Like you just you're gonna stand in here for like five, ten minutes, smile, take a deep breath. It's harder, you know. It's easier said than done. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like if you bring a good attitude for those few minutes, that's gonna show, and then you're done, and then you'll be a lot happier when when you see the photos later, cause you go, Oh, like I was in a good mood. That makes a big difference. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, yeah. Making them comfortable. E- even like video wise, if you like doing an interview or something like that on camera interview, it, you, if, if you get to know them or just talk to them, you know, one-on-one bef- right before you hit that record button or right, be- like I said, right before you hit that shutter button, uh, it, it's going to make a heck of a difference in your photo or your video. And yeah, just making someone more comfortable talking to them, making them feel, uh, relax and you know it's gonna it's gonna change the dynamic of the photo or the video that you're doing yeah and and, and you know this too um even in like the beginning process of talking to a client or a prospective client like you i don't want to say the visuals aren't important but like navigating the conversations mm-hmm. and um just like ge- like genuinely being open to ideas and and conversation is a huge deal too because if someone like thinks i'm e- like emailing the back and i'm like here's my rate if mm-hmm. you want it do it and i was like no we can like talk about different things let me know what you're looking about or what you're looking for and i yeah. can kind of like we can go back and forth politely and, and have a good conversation um you know like 
if I get a grad and they email me, like no matter what, I'm going to tell you congratulations. Like that's such a, such a huge moment in your life. Yeah. Like you should be happy about that. And like the fact that someone would even consider you for, for this moment and, and like, you know, mom's going to see it, dad's going to see it, your theas are going to see it. Like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like just navigating those conversations is, is or or even just even if you have to like simulate those conversations it's a good practice because like it'll help you navigate the business side which i don't i don't know like it's kind of like an either or sometimes i don't want to say like we're all good at bad good or bad at one thing but like i feel like i'm good at like the conversation side yeah not always so good at like the like the flat out business side (laughs) i don't know it it, it's it's a weird thing for me no and and it's funny because i know exactly what you're talking about that that business side, it's like, uh, like you, you, it's kind of like, am I doing this right? Like for me, it's like, am I doing this right? Like, um, I'm, I'll be, I, I don't do as much freelance work at, at that much anymore, but I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, I'm always open to like, you know, negotiate stuff and making them feel comfortable. But when it comes to that business side, it's like, oh, okay, am I doing this right? Or, or like the the the, the thing that gets me sometimes is like when people try to take advantage of you, especially when you're being so nice and it's like, oh, you got to be that guy and be like, hey you know you, i can't do that that wasn't part of our deal and stuff like that and i think that's the part that like makes me uncomfortable when you gotta like hey we didn't agree to that but yeah i think sometimes we're just like we just avoid that confrontation i i, yeah. I can do the same thing man if we're running like super late on a shoot and i'm just like it's fine we're 30 minutes over like we don't <laughs> even have daylight anymore <laughs> um <laughs> but i mean I don't know. Sometimes I, I think uh, like a little bit of that flexibility has helped me. Yeah, but yeah I definitely feel that like, you know, I, I try not to raise rates. It's just it's no secret that things are getting more expensive. Mm-hmm. And like every time I have to raise rates, it feels like I'm taking a dagger to my own heart. It's like nobody's going to book me like <laughs> I'm just not going to work as much stuff like that. And I think some of that, too, is like we don't really realize in the moment that the people that want to work with us are going to want to work with us yeah. and they're, they're, they're going to stretch a little bit too. Um, I'm thankful that I have a lot of clients that, that do that and they understand or, you know, I don't, this isn't like a great thing, but like so, some people are like, Oh, like charge me more. Um, <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. Um, yeah. I was like, okay, let me resend the invoice. Uh, and it's just a matter of like, yeah sometimes it's just like a lack of confidence and like well, will people pay that's this just, well, that's just like how much they value man especially like like i i think every photographer is their worst on critic but i mean honestly like your stuff your work is 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 clean it's nice it, it, it's it's great dude like i i mean if if people are like look check out your instagram or any, or your website or facebook page i mean it, it it's just nice and clean the the photos and all the images your video too man it's just so great Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, some of that, I just, I have an addiction to gear. So I was just like, I have no issue spending money on gear. And that helps <laughs> a little bit. Obviously, like the creativity goes a long way. But yeah, if I if I see a lens or something, or, you know, I'll sit there. Maybe you do this, but like, I'll sit there and I'll watch YouTube videos on this one mm-hmm. product for like seven hours, even though I've already like convinced myself, like I need this thing. Like those <laughs> DJI mics, like, dude, I'm like, I'm going to buy these things. I don't know why I'm sitting here watching reviews. Like, I love the first <laughs> ones. I definitely need the second ones. Like what? Like, who am I kidding? <laughs> I have a, I'll be honest. I haven't bought gear in a while because, you know, family and yeah. stuff like that. Like, like, for example, yeah. this, this microphone was $17 on Amazon during the pandemic. i i i love like i have a ton of little stuff that i just like love to use like this isn't like i I, people have probably seen this mic but it's like okay for 100 bucks it's like a really solid quality mic sounds great i have my little yeah and i have my little 40 dollar audio mixer from amazon um (laughs) yeah my my friends will shame me sometimes there's there's i mean like when i work on my own projects like i'll try to spend a little bit less Mm -hmm. Um, but when I know like a camera or something, I'm like, all right, like I can flex a little bit. Like you don't re- you don't see it in the moment, but yeah. it's like that money's going to come back. Like what, like, what is the worry here? And it's just like, oh. also, yeah. Yeah. yeah just... Like, like the people think people like sometimes don't know, like when we buy gear or when you buy gear, like especially expensive, like the camera bodies, I mean, that's an investment, man. That's you're going to, it's going to eventually pay for itself, especially if like, you know, you do the hustle and everything it's going to pay for itself. Yeah, 
yeah sometimes you wish it'd be sooner rather than later but um <laughs> yeah i mean you know sometimes uh i mean this is just like something i would do but especially when i was first starting and i wasn't like working as much um i would get like for instance like a, a best buy credit card mm -hmm. and i would only buy things that were like 12 months no interest yeah that's, and so that's that smart. at that point i feel like i'm renting it mm -hmm. at like so for 12 months so if you you know if you buy something that's 120 bucks and you get 12 months you're paying 10 bucks a month for it mm -hmm. and then after that after that year it's yours so i always try to think of it that way if you could like if you have that advantage or if you i mean 120 bucks probably don't have to like risk your financial future for it but yeah <laughs> but um yeah i mean there's there's options out there you just have to like be a little bit smart about it know what you need and what you don't need um yeah it just sucks that all the things you do need are just like the way the most expensive things like yeah camera bodies are not not cheap and yeah that's I, one I, of my addictions i think that one of the last big gigs i got i did uh the client wanted 4k video and i my my uh my canon 70 mark one only shoots hd <laughs> so i ended up renting a camera body because I was like, they wanted 4K and they wanted a specific lens. And I was like, I don't got the money for that. But hey, this it was a pretty big name. So I was like, let's do it. So I, I rented yeah. it and, and it came out great. And just like stuff like that. At least that's another option that people can do. Like, especially if like, uh, you don't want to invest the mo that much money all at once. You can always rent, a, rent, rent, rent some gear from people too. So that's always a good yeah. option. I, uh, I wish I was more of a renter and I'm just like, nope, I want it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> those are my bad habits, but like rent, I rented stuff too. And it like, it works out so well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, if you're, if, again, if you like talk to the client about it and you're like, Hey, this is going to like up the production. Mm -hmm. Just like if, if we want to rent it, like, <clears throat> you know, I think a lot of people are open to that. And if yeah. they're not, maybe they're not people worth working in. or you kind of just like fix it into the budget somehow. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, people should totally rent. Uh, don't don't just like flat out buy stuff because it's just a bad <laughs> habit that I have. Oh, nah, it's it's it, it it it'll work out in the end. It'll work out in the end. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing is like you're a creative person in a creative industry. Like you can be creative with how you run your business too. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be like yeah, buy the most expensive thing because people say it's the best thing. Like you're not gonna buy like a red camera and just like spend ten thousand dollars up front because it doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah um so in that case like renting something for a week or a weekend is like a great option i should actually probably do that more <laughs> nah, nah. nah especially if like you're like i know like like us married guys uh and with kids you know we we, we, we i think renting's the best thing for me and that, that's just for my situation but i mean yeah. uh i mean people are in different situations i, I mean if you know, I got, I'll still ask the boss if I can rent something, especially if I need it. <laughs> and usually, you know, it's, 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 you know, the money goes towards us. You know, we put in the savings, like for example, we did a, had to, I did a couple commercials the other day, but that money's going to a Disneyland trip, you know, for the kids. So it's going to be cool, man. It's, it's going, going yeah, for a good for cause. Sure. Yeah. He, I mean, and that's just part of like business savvy is being able to turn money into more money. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, if you can find, a million ways to do that like i think that's like a great way to have your business or your personal life yeah uh <clears throat> you know stay out stay have a good balance between work and personal yeah no speaking about like you know the work of, like you do like uh, what, what are some what are some of the services i know you, you do photography portraits and you know graduation what are some of the other things that that you also provide like some of the other stuff you do um i've been doing more video work um I have like a little bit of anxiety. I'm still learning how to edit like fully. Um, editing video can be kind of tough and and it's like, it's, I'm so used to the photo world and the photo world can be so instant and the video world is absolutely not. Like <laughs> people are shocked if you like, if you have to make a one minute cut and you have so much footage, you're going to sit there and you're like yeah. that one minute cut might take you like a few days to like really build out. <laughs> um, it seems simple. Cause on Instagram, you can just upload your little one minute video, like with your own footage. But yeah. when you're like building a story, um, you know, it can, uh, I can really take up some time. And, uh, if you're not patient like me, it'll, <laughs> um, you, you kind of have to like pace yourself out a little bit mentally. Um, but yeah, I'm doing more video work. I'm doing some social media stuff. So 
at the moment I run UTEP's men's golf account and I'm doing their photo and their video stuff. Um, so that's been exciting. I've kind of just done some like social media management um, with the Diablos when I started there. Um, did it at El Paso Inc. when I was there. So I've kind of just had my hands on that since like the very beginning. It's something I should probably uh, start to do a little more because it's, I mean, when I started photos and when I started social media, like what do we have back then? Just like Facebook mostly. Yeah. Um, a there, little there Twitter. Was, there was, there was Live Journal too, but I don't know if anyone knows what that is. <laughs> no, I, I have no idea what yeah, Live Journal is. That's old school. Dude, was. Live Journal was kind of like Facebook, but. Um, if you wanted to post a picture, you'd have to turn it into an HTML code. <laughs> that's how that's how far back it was, man. Oh. It was before copy and paste and upload your remember. photo. But it it, 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 it that's just just age myself. Yeah. But I I know a lot of people don't know what Live Journal was. But yeah, dude, that's so cool that you're doing you're doing you're you've expanded down to video. I mean, it was um oh what's it called? Uh, video for me kind of came second, but took over. And I know I understand it fully what you mean about like editing. I mean, it, it it could be it could be a little tedious. Yeah, I mean, and you could have this whole cut, and if you're just like, oh wait, I need music, and uh -huh. the music you're finding doesn't fit the cut you're making, you're just like, oh my god, I have to like rearrange or rebuild this thing. Um, yeah, it's hard learning. Like, good audio is just just as important as good video. Mm -hmm. Um. And like really making sure that you're like if your auto is bad, like your video is gonna be bad. If yeah. if we if nobody can understand the conversation or the story, then you know, you kinda kinda missed missed a lot of the the important stuff. I think yeah. people's voices, especially now that we're in like this I don't know, I mean you can call it like a creator economy, but it's it's like it's still a good storytelling economy where, you know, if you're telling the right stories, people are invested in um we've seen like a little bit of distance not i mean not necessarily a good thing in my eyes i think we both used to work in journalism and so like to see where like the journalism journalism industry is now like it's not good but that's also made a lot of people just pivot to their own careers and tell the stories they want to tell and yeah. tell a lot of stories that weren't getting told so there's a little bit of, a little bit of balance there even though um kind of wish the journalism thing wouldn't be Want to be so, I don't know, on the rocks at the moment. Yeah, like I, I, I mean, I got, I got out of it. Like, um, it's been about, I, I think it's been over ten years since I've been out of the, the journalism business. But just to see where it is now, like, like even like, like journalism wise, and like some, I, I, I'm not hating on a lot of people, anybody in particular, but like, um, quality wise too, um, it's just like gone. It's just like so different from when I was there, uh, and and it, like it just like it kind of it makes me like twitch a little bit it gets me itchy seeing how some of the quality of the video shot and and the the story sometimes and even even the audio in the interviews it's like no not like that no. or but i mean it, yeah. it, that's just that's just me being you know picky and that, i mean i was taught a different way when i was doing yeah. it how do you feel about people holding their live mics like in the shot like this? oh dude you, that <laughs> don't, don't get me started you know what you know what irks me the most when they have a wired lav mic and it's on the yeah. outside of the shirt and you can see the, the wire. Yeah. Oh, that irks me so much. Yeah. Or there's uh there's this pod podcast called the Flagrant Podcast. Uh -huh. It's it's kind of funny sometimes, but what they'll do is like they'll go under the shirt, over the top, and then it's pinned like right here. Oh. So it's just wire up and over the shirt <laughs> and into the I'm like, dude, yeah. like there's so many other ways to do that. Yeah, like uh, and like, like just like the, tape it under the shirt. Yeah, or like the the those those new like uh wireless box ones. Like you know, I understand like they they clip them and that, that's cool. I mean, but I hate when they have the big fuzzy thing and it's sticking out. Uh, like yeah. for me, like I, I we have we have a set like that. Um, we have a DJI Pocket with a wireless mic, but I bought the the wired lav so it plugs in and they can still clip it underneath the shirt. So I try to, I just, I, I can't stand when yeah. I see like, that just gets me. And I think that's one of my, that's like a pet peeve of mine. And it's like, no, just, you know, under your shirt or something or, or we'll do it from yeah. the back. Cause I know sometimes the ladies wear dresses and you can't, can't go under the shirt, uh, dress obviously, right. but it's like, make it look yeah. cleaner. It's not that hard. Yeah. Or sometimes what I'll do with the DJ, I like, especially if it's on a dark shirt, I'll mm -hmm. use the magnet on the outside of the oh, shirt. Oh yeah. Those are cool. Just, yeah. And so it'll just kind of just like. It's there, but it's a lot more subtle than like, 
green and red light on your chest yeah. while you're talking. Um, yeah, part of the reason I, I, I didn't really, like, see this, because obviously you, like, hear about these things, like, oh, how's the audio, how's the battery, whatever. Mm-hmm. But, like, I guess on the new DJI mics, they have the lights on the sides, so they're a lot less visible oh, cool. than, like, when you have it, like, clipped right here. Sorry. When you have it clipped right here and there's just, like, flashing lights while you're talking. <laughs> so another reason to want them they're they're really this is not like a pitch for for dji but yeah um hey but they're good and affordable yeah. man they're not as expensive as a lot of other places a lot of other no brands. i mean dude i mean like i was talking to someone about like the sennheisers like mm-hmm. those packs are huge if you don't have a double double a batteries on you and your battery pack runs out yeah what do you do um right? <laughs> those have kind of been like the industry standard but like it's kind of cool to see things be more compact and like just give people and especially like people that are just starting their business like those are half the price yeah. of the sennheisers and, and this but do I, pretty good work i'll be honest those sennheisers like i've worked with sennheiser since i was at uh kdbc back in the day like 2006 mm-hmm. man i think that's when i 2006 is i think or five whatever i like, it was a little earlier because i was there for the floods and that's the reason I'm, i stand by sennheiser because i was shooting during the floods sennheiser fell off this uh the reporter's um when they were taking it off and it was floating down the street i went and grabbed it and it still worked bro so amazing all the way yeah i don't think i don't (laughs) think my i don't think my djs can do that but yeah no but but they those are pricey though they're expensive yeah i mean it's like 700 bucks you get one mic and (laughs) um if you dish out an extra 200 you get the dual with the cube and you can have a stick mic too but that's still only one mic though (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I don't have eight hundred bucks for mics, but I, right. I'll, I'll think about it in the future. Um, yeah, I mean, it's also cool to see how much like technology has changed, and mm-hmm. like, it's. I mean, if you're just a person that wants to make like shorter videos, and you have like these little mics that just go into your iPhone, yeah. and they just work, and they sound so much better than like what an iPhone's going to put out. Um, super cool, man. It's just nice to. I feel like. I don't know. I wasn't really like uh, doing this in 2006, but just like the number of options you have from yeah. then to now is just like, cool. like how hard would it have been to find uh, like a $17 podcast mic? Mm-hmm. Like it would have been, you'd have to like buy the shares that are like 400 bucks. Yeah. yeah well, Not like, exactly. Well, I mean, like you said with the phone, I mean, I've shot, I've shot whole package, whole news packages on my phone before. It, it's, it's pretty yeah. crazy. Um, so I had this assignment with the New York times last year and it was a video specific assignment. Mm -hmm. They sent like, I just use their iPhone and the DJI mics. That's it. Yeah. And I was, and it was like, yeah, just use the phone. Um, okay, cool. Like I'll, and I mean, they had me use my drone, but like, yeah, like just being able to shoot a full story on an iPhone, like the thing that's in your pocket already. So cool. I mean, yeah it's yeah and iphone cameras are amazing like if if i forget a camera or i don't have a camera on me like i have no issue like busting out my iphone yeah yeah i i i yeah. agree i mean I, I think i did i did one uh uh with it just for fun because we went to the uh, sun bowl oh, a few years ago and uh i shot like a little like uh, tailgate video with the family but I ended up shooting like a whole bunch of other people and then turned it into a little like, video. It was pretty fun. And I've used that actually in a couple of uh, like interviews before. And they were just like, what? You shot it on a phone? I'm like, yeah. And that was like the old yeah. iPhone. So it was pretty funny. That's pretty amazing. I'm curious. what, How many how many photos and videos do you have in your iPhone? Oh, like, you, mine? You, like this one. Okay. And yeah. this one's this one's a new one. I just got it like okay. right before. Uh, let me see. I got, like, like I got 15... <laughs> Uh, 1,510 photos and I have 803 videos. You, you don't back up to iCloud or whatever? Um, No, not yet. <laughs> that's, that's insane. Um, If you had to just guess what, what, like the number under my recents, like what, just take a guess. Uh, I'm going to have to go with like somewhere in like the 600s. No, no. no? <laughs> like you're not, you're not even close. Is It's higher? <laughs> it, like exponentially higher oh I, like are you around like 1500 photos or you like add commas oh what you got like 10 you like yeah. fifteen thousand photos higher no <laughs> yeah i don't know if my camera's gonna pick up on it but i, I want to see this so hopefully it'll pick up if not we're gonna yeah 
Let's see. What is that? That say, I think it's because it's backwards, but I can't tell. Was that 80, 80, 80 something? 89, 89, 89, 000. 000, bro. What the heck? Yeah, dude, I don't know. I, I mean, there's sometimes where like I'll finish a gallery, yeah, especially with like UTEP stuff, and I just have this habit of like just transferring everything into my photos. <laughs> it also, it also creates like a backup, yeah, with Google Photos. So, like, yeah, that's like Ooh. it's insane. Dang, dude, that's crazy. I wonder what the record is. I should call Guinness. Right? We should. We should f figure it out. Hey, one yeah. thing I want to mention for sure is that calendar right behind you, man. That's the annual Salgado photo calendar, man. Uh, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I haven't picked one up yet. I need to get okay. mine, order mine. Um, but talk, talk to me real quick a little bit about your cal your annual calendar of El Paso and the surrounding areas. Yeah, this is um like one of my favorite projects to do it always feels like it's always exhausting but it's very rewarding um because yeah. i love when i like i'll get an order from like north carolina or i'll get something from like wisconsin and like i get a lot of love from people that have moved away or, or know people that moved away because um like they just feel a little bit more connected mm -hmm. um and so that always hits me in the heart a little bit um mm -hmm. but yeah this is just kind of photos i shoot throughout the years i stay very aware of the sunsets uh in case you don't follow my instagram it's a very popular theme see um and it's just like for me it's like very soothing to like look at these photos like um i really love that photo of january um see. that's our mountain that's our landmark like yeah if 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 anything else like that star is ours and uh we happily claim it and yeah it's just fun to put together right now they're half off because you've basically lost a month <laughs> um, <laughs> and and they're i have i have like about a hundred ish left so I'm just trying to move them out um have people who want them uh pretty try to make it as affordable as possible yeah um cool. things are not cheap in this economy but <laughs> um yeah I, I um super happy with with how it comes out every year uh, i had another note and i just can't remember it but oh basically i mean really if what you want to do is have the photos like mm -hmm. you're basically getting 14 eight by tens and you can just like pull the staples off and if you want to frame them you can frame them i mean that's like the easiest way to do it because i'm gonna sell an eight by ten for a lot more um <laughs> yeah i mean you're gonna have like a tiny hole yeah in, in the but you know you can i guess you could cut away or um, uh, at least it's a nice clean out. hole it's not like something that's all jagged <laughs> yeah. So. yeah professionals do these i'm not like <laughs> hole punching these <laughs> these calendars myself uh, that's cool no yeah dude that 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 is one of my favorite uh things that you put out is is the uh, the sunset photos the, the photos of the city and your your um your your yearly calendar that you put out man it's just so something to look forward to yeah some of those they're just like love letters to El Paso this was 2000 or two, 2023 was my 20th year and mm -hmm. um I truly don't think I'd have the career I have like without El Paso as you know like we're not very competitive here in that way that other yeah. markets are and we're very friendly and so you know people they're always going to connect you to the next person and so luckily i've been able to build a, a business off that and so yeah i'm feeling super grateful for it oh um, that's cool uh, one, one thing i quickly want to mention is i'm trying to start a little project called the creative journal mm -hmm. um you can follow it on instagram i know i'm watching the clock also no no, <laughs> um, no, no, no. We'll, well if you want we'll we'll continue this in another another one right now too Okay, I'll, I'll I'll try to keep it succinct, but yeah, the Creative Journal, so T H E E, Creative Journal. Um, I kind of just want it to be a space where I can talk to creatives about like industry stuff. It'll be a lot of industry talk, um, some like navigating the business processes of starting your business, marketing your business, getting to know people who are in the industry and like what their stories are. Um, cool. Try to keep it positive. I think you know there's there's bad experiences and if people want to share that i think that's important too but yeah uh, for the most part just kind of have a healthy space where people can talk about like their creative journey um whether in el paso or out of el paso or uh, everything in between well what in what in, what inspired your the the project you're working on now really um i think it's a lot of things mostly that you know as i've been like 
navigating the industry and now have a little bit of a bigger platform, which just sounds weird to say or whatever. Um, but like, um, I just want to have a, a place where it's like positive and, uh, it's informative to people who are joining the industry because I think there's a lot more people joining it. Um, yeah. and there's like not a ton of information out there about like, how do you do this? Like we kind of just hop yeah. on Instagram and it's like, okay, like I'm, I'm, you know, you might make a flyer or something, but you don't really know who to talk to. And so, you know, sometimes I just get a lot of questions like, oh, if I want a credential for this thing or like, how did you do this? Or who do you talk to? And so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not photography and video aren't the only creative industry and it's like, mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends who are artists, muralists, um, singers, chefs, you know, um, that, uh, you know, it'd be great to one, I'm a journalist at heart, so I would love to hear about their stories. And two, if they can help people, um, you know, elevate their business or, or learn what like the steps to take. I think that's so valuable. Um, it's kind of hard. I think I have a, I have a great, I have a lot of great friendships with people who don't gatekeep information. Um, and so I think like transparency and like just being able to have the conversation, especially like with, with rates and stuff. I know like people like really guard that stuff closely and it's yeah. like, you can watch a million YouTube videos mm -hmm. and I'm going to spoil them all for you. They're all going to say, Oh, well you should charge what you feel your work is worth. Um, yeah. You know, that answer versus what like, you're paying in a place like El Paso or two different things like, yeah. um, and it can be kind of hard to navigate that. And so, you know, if people have questions or if they want to be like fully transparent about it, that's cool too. It's, it's that information, that information is just not out there. Um, yeah. and yeah, I think some of it is just the journal and the journalist in me wanting to be nosy. <laughs> um, it might be podcast style. It might just be like, a, uh, uh, I'm gonna. I don't know if you'll have to bleep me. I don't know if we can swear on this, but if you've this ever can. watched um, Shitty Rigs, like <laughs> their their content's so good um, because it's just like very straightforward, and they have conversations about industry and stuff like that. And so, you know, it might just be this thing that kind of floats as as a format um, and a platform. So maybe it's behind the scenes stuff that people want to share. Maybe it's conversations that people want to have maybe it's you know like we talk about someone's business and mm. and what they're doing and why it's important uh i know you do that a lot and like you know as just your, yourself as a journalist here like um makes you it also makes you happy to like have give people a platform to talk about what they're working on and, and yeah. push their business out like that's so valuable i mean everything's getting expensive so i think like if we're we have the opportunity to support local people more yeah. that's so valuable it's just like it's, it just becomes this revolving door of of like positivity and and helping businesses run in like a good uh efficient way right uh, i think that's a great idea i mean i i've done this since the start of pandemic just to help uh you know help a few friends and some family members that had some businesses that were struggling and it's like hey i can get to maybe i can get them a couple more customers here and there and just started doing it I really like enjoyed doing it and it's it just like uh not saying it's uh I, I guess it's grown a little bit but i mean I, i'm not doing it for the famer i just if i can get like one to two people to like a certain business or or maybe even get a couple phone calls to like first maybe get you a, a phone call to to you even just to get a couple phone calls that's just something i want to help help with and i think yeah, your idea with getting you know helping out with you know an all, all around industry with what you want to do i think that's going to be awesome yeah, same here. And this isn't like, this is like strictly something uh, I want to do just to help people. And like, even even with photographers, like, I don't think I'm the photographer for every solution. Like, mm -hmm. um, I think if you're able to connect people even that little bit and help them find someone that they have a relationship with for, yeah. you know, 10, 20 years, like, I always look at it this way, if I can have a good relationship with a client, let's say they have a kid and like you become close. And so you have that relationship for 10, 18 years, like as, as, as they're growing up. And also like you can just kind of connect yourself with more people and, and um, you just build like a better personal network for yourself. Yeah. And 
Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, I say I'm pretty introverted, but I think like some of these conversations I just like really want to have and I'm eager to learn about people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, being a journalist is so cool. And you know, like any given day, you're just having different conversations and different con uh, experiences with people. And so yeah. Uh, some days you were at a Utah basketball game. Some days you were talking to a doctor about what's going on. The next day you're in a classroom and it's the first day of school and you're seeing the cutest kids freak out <laughs> um, and crying yeah. in a class. You, I mean, you kind of do that. I mean, you still do that now. But... Uh, did I lose you? Uh, did we disconnect? Okay, oh. okay, you're back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yeah, we, you froze up for a little bit. Yeah, I sorry about that. <laughs> oh, it's saying my it's saying for some reason my internet's unstable. Oh, I think I need to I think I need to reset my my whole internet system. But yeah, yeah, I, I I mean I we've uh we've talked about like um uh I mean yeah just being being able to like like you said I I <laughs> seeing the first day of school with those kids man it's just like a it's just a crazy experience and I I enjoy doing that now especially where I'm at now. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, your, and your job is so, like, full of gratitude. You're helping kids. You're helping tell their stories. Um, yeah, journalists are, are so important. Um, just to go back a little bit, I, like, really love my time as a journalist. I could, mm -hmm. you know, I spent five years at my old publication, and it was just, like, I want to tell different stories now and, like, just do it, do it on my own time and, and figure out to tell and there's so many stories to tell here in el paso yeah yeah everyone's it, so unique yeah it's pretty crazy man i just uh, i i enjoy I, like we had talked about i i enjoyed my time uh when i was working and as a photographer for the news and um i i, I do miss it I, I i love the uh the whole like craziness of it sometimes but i, I again it's just i, I i'm just happy I, i've evolved and, and am, i am where i'm at now and the the one thing like i've talked about like i always would love to like share like one of my what i guess say kind of like my life one of my goals later in life i would love to like teach like um a video or production class and either even if i even just do it in high school i just want to like be able to share some knowledge that i've learned and the thing is too is like um i always tell people because sometimes i get asked questions hey what where'd you go to school at it's like i learned from the streets like uh, i'm not uh i i didn't i didn't go to college I did. Oh, I did go to college, but I didn't finish. But I, 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 everything I've learned is from experience and just, you know, picking people's brains and learning here and there. And just, I would love to like share that knowledge as much as I could. Yeah, I, uh, I went, I went to, I went to college. I graduated, but I definitely have a master's in YouTube University because, <laughs> um, YouTube is just like there's so much information there. Yeah. Um, not saying that like i there's a lot of things i definitely benefited from especially mm -hmm. networking when i was in college um but yeah sometimes you just kind of have to like teach yourself or or sometimes you don't like just the practice of it and you have like this is a job you have to do with your hands and your eyes so mm -hmm. it's like you can tell me something and put it on a chalkboard but it doesn't like resonate until i'm practicing and practicing yeah. and practicing that, that's exactly how how i am that's i i learned the best way of actually either doing it or or actually doing it myself or someone showing it to me and then doing it not like writing on a chalkboard i'm one of those visual app not i'm not i'm, I'm a visual learner but i i have to watch it and then i have to do it because i can't yeah, just like i i have like the hardest time reading like reading in a book and trying to follow directions and do it a certain way um if i can visually see how it's being done i got i can get it right away yeah for sure I, i'm i'm the same way and i think that's such a valuable to like especially if that's something you want to do in the future, like for mm -hmm. you, like, we're, that's just like the world we live in. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we went from newspaper and now like video is like our main form of communication. Yeah. Even photos sometimes like, you know, there's, and there's a place for newspapers. I worked at a newspaper. I love holding a newspaper, mm -hmm. but like being realistic about where the world is, like we know the importance of video um, and video can be such a good tool for meshing the words and the visuals um and like effective communicators like they can share a video um yeah. and know that that's like such a valuable tool and still be like ah oh, no i miss newspapers and newspapers were the only way oh you can still get your news that way but like yeah. if you want to reach a wider audience at the at this point like we're doing we're on video right now yeah. like it's such that's a what we're doing right now a good communication tool 
Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, think like, and like, I, it makes me feel old now that I'd be like, yeah, times have changed, you know, back in my day. And like, yeah, like we were like, for example, I was talking about that yesterday, last night, I was talking to, uh, talking to my daughter about me, the music and how her stuff, the, the music they listen to now is totally different from what we listened to back in the day. And I know I'm a little, I'm a lot older than you are, but it's like, I, it, it's, it's totally different from what the kids are listening to now. Oh, 100 percent. Sometimes I'll hear like a song on the Internet. I'm like, no, this is an old song. Like I heard this 20 years ago. <laughs> right. And nobody asked you to remake it. Like it was fine. Yeah. It was great. And yeah, yeah well, I mean, I, I hate it when they, when they sample old stuff and it's like, oh, and it's like the like the songs stuff now. Mostly it's like they're just like a, it's like five lines and it's over and over for like three minutes. I was like, that's not a song. You got no you need a verse. You need a court. You need verses. You need courses. But that's a whole nother. That's yeah. a whole nother podcast bro we can get into <laughs> yeah we'll call that the old guys podcast right? yeah i'm the oh same way i'm like yeah don't like if there's any two things you can take away from this podcast this episode in particular don't hold your lav or your wireless mic in front of your face yeah that's not what it's for there's a thing called handling noise it's exactly what it sounds like mm -hmm. um like if i do this yeah i can't hear it in my but i'm sure you heard it sorry yeah. very annoying <laughs> um and like stop sampling music like so like blatantly that you're like <laughs> no i'm gonna listen to the thing from 2002 now because that's the better version of it yeah no i hear you we need to get some of these uh some of these uh creators that are local we need to see if we can do a gofundme so we can get them a handheld mic when they're doing the interviews so so they yeah, uh, I and mean, then I, maybe we should do a um, we should do like a, a conference man me and you we should uh, do like a hey don't do this don't have your yeah. wire just sticking out of your shirt because it's lazy. We should we should make a, a fun TikTok about uh about not holding your lives. I I mean Oh dude, you stay away now. Like, I'm down, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this isn't a microphone, but like if there's little handles that are like ten bucks on Amazon mm -hmm. and you just slide your mic in, you hold it, you're yeah. eliminating handling noise, you stick like a wind muff on it, so your audio's not terrible when the wind hits it. Like yeah. All these things you can do for under 20 bucks if you mm -hmm. spent the 20 bucks on the mic you can spend another 20 to make sure like hey it's not like in my shot yeah or it's not like or it's more like a traditional like holding a mic yeah there's one girl her her podcast is very popular but they'll have podcast mics like these uh-huh and she holds them she holds like oh oh I'm, i'll send it to you i'm gonna send you oh, a screenshot and it's, <laughs> and it's like <laughs> dude just get like a stand yeah, like, it's not that hard. It's not not that not that expensive. No, no uh, things are like very inexpensive on Amazon, and they make. Oh, dude, it irks me so much, and I like <laughs> every time she's like holding her. I'm like, dude, you're gonna get like. I'm surprised you don't get so much noise from just holding yeah, your from mic. Holding it, just like, oh. And it's those are so. It's like a sure one, and it's like very thick. I'm like, dude, that thing's heavy. Oh, those I things would not are expensive hold that. too. Why wouldn't they? Do you think they would? And it's funny that like you spend that much money on a on a mic just spend the extra like or well, for the sure one i guess you'd have to spend a little extra for it if you wanted the same brand but yeah just get a freaking stand man it's not that hard or oh, tabletop yes. stand you know that way you don't have to hold it yeah you, like for those a lot of those mics you don't have to be so close but it, i guess depending on too but yeah just get a stand yeah i know this is completely turned into like, know, old man rage. like we're just now we're just like we're just, <laughs> just bad, old man. rating people man like, oh, back in that. 1999 nobody was holding a mic to their face like that <laughs> we were shouting Limp at biscuit you. yeah limp biscuit was shouting at all of us <laughs> <laughs> um no man i i appreciate you coming on we, we got to do this again man i think uh you let me know anywhere you want to do that tiktok and uh well yeah. when you get when you get your thing going uh let me know that way i can share it um and if you need a guest, let me know. I'll be happy to be on. We can complain more about music and, and the way people hold their mic, their love mics. Dude, I'd love to. I mean, any, like, I'm, I, I love conversation. So anytime we can just rage about the things that, that, that make us upset, yeah. little things, well, we, uh, we'll, I'm, we'll pick I'm a, happy we'll, to do that. We'll pick a topic and we'll just complain about like something in the media or the way someone's doing something or holding yeah. the camera on. I'll definitely have a therapy episode for for all the people that just like want to rage about oh uh, dude that how, you know we should have changed we should do we should do uh we'll, we'll have to do like a live like on social media we'll do a live one and then whoever's in media they can like jump on and just complain about whatever they want to dude that'd be such a fun instagram live idea right <laughs> um 
yeah we would lose all the 20 year olds immediately but yeah uh otherwise yeah it'd be hilarious <laughs> cool no hey man i i appreciate you so much it it's uh selgado photos uh you can find you on uh all all the uh instagram facebook are you still on is it x now or are you still on x i don't i don't say x when i go to the website i type in twitter.com oh same do um, i do too i do too yeah you know, hold, I, um, hold just that little bit of will make uh elon a little mad just because i'm still typing yeah in twitter. i think so um that's why i do it really just to <laughs> like just to make sure i'm still on the bird app and not the x app no 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 yeah i'll make sure i include all the information in the description below it i'll even link your youtube page that you got going on your website um and that way if, if people want to find you for they need some photos some video and some drone work licensed drone operator here just so everyone know. knows that because you need a license to operate it, at least to make money to make money yes. to do commercial a lot of people a lot of people don't hear i won't yeah. name names but that's very visible sometimes oh <laughs> old man rage again but yeah <laughs> no but yeah i will i will include all the information in the description below uh we'll have another conversation sir because i enjoy this a whole much uh hopefully everyone else is still here but and anything else you want to add <laughs> add before we end today man no uh i'm just super th super thankful you had me on i'm super super thankful that you do this um i'm sure you've helped countless people and connected countless people and like yeah there's so much value in that and i hope that i can only do the same like with stuff i do in the future because it's yeah it's it's a great thing just even hearing people's stories is super yeah. important so always grateful that you reach out even my bed my when my schedule is chaotic and <laughs> we tried to make this happen for six months that's my fault i know uh, no no that's a good thing that you're busy man so that, that's so yeah. cool and i if, appreciate you coming I, on so much if i have an accountant they would be very happy that i'm busy but they if they looked at my expenses they would not be very happy <laughs> that, that's why you do it by yourself and you don't have an accountant yeah, <laughs> yeah nobody <laughs> knows but me yeah no, but sir, I appreciate you. Uh, I, I again uh, will get all your information in the description below. That way, people can hook you, hook up with you, check out your work, buy that gorgeous calendar. Again, it's on discounted rate right now, so check it out. Your website, order it, and then after the month's done, frame the next one. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, sir, absolutely. so much. No, sir, you have all a good right, day. Well, we'll, you need anything? You, you let me know. And we'll look forward soon. to your to your new project coming out soon, and I will I will Sweet. be happy to share it around. Sweet, thanks, man. I appreciate you. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Yeah, you too.